buildings and dwellings on earth are built on inanimate objects. But the church of Jesus Christ, which we are, cannot be built on anything inanimate. Jesus Christ is very much animated. And so our opening song this morning is The Church's One Foundation, number 452. The Church's One Foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. Number 147, 147.
I believe for every person who claims this song as a prayer in honesty and humility, God will answer that prayer. I was in a revival meeting one night in Pickway, Ohio, when I first heard this song sung out of the old red hymn book that we had, I'd never heard it before. And uh, as I heard the congregation sing it, I perceived that hardly anyone knew what they were singing. Because when you know what you're singing, there's a response. There's an outward response. doesn't mean that we all respond exactly alike, but... For the most part, there's a response of the sparkle of the eye or tears or even as Barry responded for us all a few moments ago. And my heart was so stirred because I'd never heard this song. I looked around at a, di- at a dry, nominal, dead church, or so it's proved to be. And after it was over, I asked for permission to speak. And I said, oh, dear ones, How long have you been singing this song? How long have you been praying this prayer? Do you really mean it? This is one of the most wonderful prayers I've ever heard in my life. Just as that first hymn is one of the most wonderful hymns of the the living church. And I said, I'm so glad I came here tonight. Because had I not come, I might never have learned about this song. I took that song from that sanctuary and I made my way to an upper room, a room where my study was apart from the little country church that I pastored. And there, morning after morning, week after week, month after month, in my time of devotion and prayer, which lasted at least one hour, sometimes three, I would sing this song in prayer. Breathe, only I changed it. Breathe upon me, Lord from heaven. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Promise of the Father given. Send me now a Pentecost. Breathe upon me, breathe upon me. With thy love, my heart inspire. Breathe upon me, breathe upon me. Lord, baptize me now with fire. While the Spirit hovers over me, open my heart, I pray. To thine image, Lord, restore me. Witness in my soul today. O Lord, lift me, lift me higher. And that touches my heart. From the carnal mind set free. Fill me with refining fire. Give me perfect liberty. Breathe upon me. Breathe upon me. With thy love my heart inspire. Breathe upon me. Breathe upon me. O Lord, baptize me now with fire. It was on one of those days that although I had placed my young son in the floor, on the floor below, in the place below to play with some toys that day. Seldom have I ever taken him to my study. My wife's never required it of me, never. But on this day, I took him, just myself. I said, I'd like to take Brian with me today. I had him something to play, and I was going down to check him periodically. But after I'd sung this song, coupled with an old song, Let the Fire Fall on Me, and it shouted from wall to wall and jumped as high as I could. I heard a noise at the door. And I thought that one of the members had come and I surely would be most embarrassed because I surely had been given perfect liberty. And I went to the door and I peeped out and there on the floor with his ear pressed to the door was my son Brian. Whatever was happening to his father on the floor above was far more interesting than playing with the toys. It is my hope and my prayer that the joy and the touch of God that landed upon him that day will visit again in the day of his calling. Praise the Lord. As we bow our heads for prayer, would Barry, would you take the microphone there? 
I believe it's just back of you. Is it there? We've forgotten it. Come on up here and pray, would you? Lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning for the privilege of being in this place. Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for how you've helped so much, Jesus, for how you've been with us. We thank you, Lord, for what you did this week with young people at camp, Lord. Yes. How wonderful the services were and what a privilege to be here. And Jesus, for how you helped in Sunday school, Lord, I knew when I came in, it'd be by your grace, I'd just keep setting down. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I'm thankful, Lord, because I, I felt like running when I got to the end of Sunday school, Jesus, and I knew that she's going to have to help me get on the end of the aisle there somewhere. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, I thank you, Jesus, for your help. Thank you. Jesus. Jesus, I pray that you'd be with us here today. Help our pastor, Lord. Help thank him to you, know Jesus. Jesus, that we love him, that we're behind him, Jesus, by thank your you. grace. We ask that you'd be with us in this service, Lord, that you'd anoint, lead, and guide in everything that's said and done. Pray that you cleanse our hearts here, Lord. Raise Amen. us up as a pure people, not to look for the right to the left, Jesus, but to stay on the plain path. That's good. Lord, we're thankful, Jesus. Help us here today, and we praise you for the privilege of being here. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise First of all, was traveling through Israel and the joy of seeing the desert bloom like a rose. The Arab is a wonderful man and is needy of salvation and as important as any other individual on the earth. 
And at the risk of being offensive to somebody throughout Christendom, I must say, with God's word. But the Jew is God's chosen man to this day. And the land was given to him forever. And one of the proofs in that is that when he touches the land, she blossoms. And so we've seen the desert bloom like a rose from Dan to Beersheba. In a few days, we shall see her bloom again. But then my mind went to um, the church where we Gentiles, we heathen, were persons without hope and certainly without blossom. And where there's no blossom, there's no fragrance. But Christ died for us. And he who had hardened his heart, the vine himself, Israel, was cut off in part for a while and made blind that we might have salvation. Until the fullness of the Gentiles. And then her eyes shall be open. And then his eyes shall be open. For Israel is in the masculine and I rejoice that the beautiful Jewish man that we see as a nation shall know the power and the majesty of God. And his face shall shine in wisdom. And the lame, spiritually speaking here, shall leap for joy. And of course, the physical blessings shall also come to pass too. Arab and Jew, our brothers, but Christ has promised to bless us again through his own people. And I'm happy about it today. And he takes us back over and over again. Great will be the day when we see the Jewish man sitting under the vine and the fig tree in peace and prosperity. Until then... We have him within. For in Christ we sit under that tree. And the desert shall bloom like a rose. And my heart is blessed. Thank you, choir. Michael, while Judy plays it again, would you get the trombone? I know Dick's not here. But would you get the trombone and just in the joy of this blooming, would you uh, kind of play along with her there? Kind of an anointed Dixieland style.
was so good. <laughs> I thought if, he, if you could capture the joy in my heart that you might understand why this would fit so well. That joy is springing up in your own soul just now. Jeannie has a poem that goes along with what the choir just sung. And uh, she'll share that with us before we make everyone welcome. Somebody might have borrowed her poetry. Anybody borrow Jeannie's poetry? It's out of her case. Well, we'll, we'll just hold off for a while. Tell you what you do, Judy, let's just uh, have them stand saying, give them oil. Give me oil in my lamp, keep it burning. And then we'll, we'll have a greeting here. All right. Mm -hmm. Give me oil in my lamp, keep it burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep it burning. Keep it burning till the break of day. standing, would you shake hands with those that are around you and make everyone welcome, both guests and home folk. Make Praise God from whom all blessings standing, would you pray with me those words our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is so wonderful that Jesus would anoint again the saying of the Lord's Prayer. And when we prayed through it then, the witness that touched my heart was hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. I thought, dear ones, how wonderful it is that so great a Savior should visit us here this day. How wonderful it is that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob should be our God also. For he is not only our creator, he is our God and our Father. And for him to condescend through the Holy Spirit, and be with us this day is beyond the best thoughts that I can think. I thank Him. I wish that we could, before we sit down, and respond by giving an affirmation of faith If someone will hand me a bulletin and uh, declare unto those who are here the earth and the devil, these great truths that have been preached for 2,000 of years. 
the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Lights, like the Hogs are leaving tomorrow. They're headed north and we're headed south. Michigan and Florida are at extremes as far as the United States is concerned, north and south. How thankful I am that these Sundays that Pastor Steve's been absent, that uh, Dad has so wonderfully filled his place in directing the choir in the selection of the hymns and also now this morning bringing to us a solo that by the way is in keeping with the sermon because this solo is entitled There is a Bomb in Gilead and the bomb of Gilead comes from a tree. Bless you, Dad. I don't... Uh very often do it anymore, mention anything about uh, the song that I'm going to sing or attempting to. But uh, this song, A Bomb in Gilead, is not just a song. Whoever wrote this 
must have had, well, the name's here, must have had a lot of love in, in uh, a person's heart for people and must have been well aware of, of uh, Israel as a, as a country and something about the Old Testament and the New Mostly, well, for both of them, Gilead, back at uh, one time during the Old Testament times, was located northeast of Israel, and some of it may be claimed in Israel, but later on, after Rome became the... Uh, the nation who ruled Israel at the time, of course, that Jesus was crucified. Gilead was mentioned as a whole surrounding in the northern part, if I be not mistaken. But the bomb in Gilead, as uh, Brother Oliver mentioned, or I called him my son so much of the time, that uh, bomb was a cure. He will take care of that, which I wouldn't go into. But that bomb, B-O-M-B, is one which would destroy everything. The bomb, B-A-L-M, of Gilead is, is the one person, personality, which is Christ himself. Is the one who is the cure and yeah. the savior for everything. See, just exactly the opposite. Only they're both pronounced pretty much the same way. One is bomb and the other is bomb. So they, you have to catch the uh, pronunciation there. But one of the things mentioned here is sometimes I feel discouraged and I think my work's in vain. But the Holy Spirit revives my soul again and the uh, last part of it or the second stanza says if you cannot preach like Peter now I, I hope you're listening and, and you look as though you are if you cannot preach like Peter if you cannot pray like Paul you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all Amen. so all of us can't be an Oliver Hogue we can't be a brother Hale and a lot of other people who are are gifted from God to bring to the world the message is about Jesus. We can't all do this, but we can tell about him as much as we know how. So, uh, the fact that when we think our work's in vain and that there's no use to try anything, that it is, that is uh, uh, really a fallacy, isn't it? It's up to us. Well, uh, the pastor's preaching the sermon. So I'll say my stuff. Oh, 
Thank you. 